Take away, good Lord, the sin that corrupts, and give us the faith that heals in Christ our Lord. Amen. In a perhaps slightly strange way, I like Lent, possibly because it's a period where our faith is shown the provision for growing up, that the gospel is able to cope more than cope with our adult faith, our needs, our daily life, and the messiness that it brings, to move on from the pretty pictures of Christmas into the messiness of now and today. And I don't know about you, but my now can be very messy. And then when we come back around to Christmas, we find it's not just pretty pictures. What do I mean? Well, let's today's scriptures illustrate it for us. It's not often that it's the Old Testament which seems to provide the greater hope and positivity, but it seems to be so today. That piece that we heard from Isaiah, if it's not familiar enough that we can actually quote it, it is familiar enough that we can feel its resonances, its hope and its glory. It is beautiful and beautifully hopeful. Whereas the gospel, those people who've died, been killed, and unless you repent, unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did, sounds like a threat. Sounds like an Old Testament, old time preacher of hell's thunder and damnation, up on your soapbox or six foot pulpit, point the finger and scowl. It's not, but it sounds like it. And maybe sometimes we would like it to be like that. Sometimes isn't there a part of us that would like to be beyond the pale? Too low, too far gone for God's love. Because then we could simply walk away, wash our hands of it, and say, well, it's not my fault, I'm just too bad. Unfortunately for that part of us, we're not. In the parable of the fig tree, the fig tree is Israel, or now, us. The gardener for me is Christ, saying, Just let me give them a little more. Tend a little more. Lavish care a little more. The clear understanding being that he'll say, if necessary, exactly the same thing next year and next time we fall or fail. Those people who were killed, those people who died, they died because they fought the Romans. It's as simple as that. Don't go looking for causal sin or divine judgment or punishment. Rather, we should take some responsibility. They died because they fought a military empire. But you, he says, you take this chance, rethink, repent. Where do you put your faith, your trust, so that even through death you may find you do not die and find life? St. Paul takes a similar line in our second lesson. Don't think that the symbols of baptism or the elements of bread and wine will save you. Come on, he says, grow up. Take some adult responsibility for appreciating the childlike gifts of grace. Anyone can say they are the child of Abraham. Anyone can say they've been baptized and then allow it to go no further into their life than that. No place for God. No place for the messiness of not knowing, of not being in control. 
No place for that truth that God still loves us. That our faults and failings just don't count for anything in his heart. His crucifixion goes on just the same. His gospel pours out hope all the more. And patience and tender care and even greater attention. Baptismal faith and communion require our honesty and truth. Partly with each other, more with ourselves, and certainly with God. Yes, there's testing and times when we feel tested. But then the whole point is God does not leave us when we are tested. Go back to Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. There's our invitation. In the care of that loving gardener. To trust, return and blossom. And if that's all just too pretty. Then put it in the context of your messiness. All your Senses of failing, of disappointment, of frustration, of doubt in your worth or of your life or in God. Receive this as an adult. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Give God a bit of credit. It's only us who are so low sighted as to think we could be beyond the pale. Even you, even me. God's love. For you is extraordinary. And he knows what we're hiding. So do not condemn yourself. Do not die. But hold faith. That even in death you will find life. The promise of life. It's there. It's for you. It is an absolute gift. And it's not beyond your grasp or reach. Because God places it by the wounded hands of Christ right into your open palms. So what do we find? No threat. No horror. No disappointment. But a steely Christ who says, Grow up. Because your faith and your God are capable of it. Ready for it ready to enable you to grow, blossom and bear such fruit as you may never have dreamt possible. This is God, remember. Faithful beyond measure. 
enjoy being loved and lovely for true goodness sake thanks be to God Amen